what needs to be done to combat piracy? Piracy is a topic we've heard a lot about in the last day here at CMA, as we have the last couple of years. Uh, we've gone from not talking about military solutions to the use of armed guards, which, uh, in other words, uh, not paramilitary or well-trained escorts that are going to be on the ships, people who are trained in the use of weapons and who will be on merchant ships. Most of the major flag states, not just the flags of convenience, do permit uh, troops to be on these ships or retire, mostly retired military, retired SAS or retired Marines or retired Navy SEALs. And it is now realized that the war against piracy is escalating. Uh, as you know, I represent a flag state. I'm a principal and I'm a senior deputy commissioner of the Marshall Islands Ship Registry. And we see problems ahead that we would like to see dealt with. For one thing, there is a general consensus which we share that there has got to be a concern about the lives of the seafarers. There is also an awareness that most seafarers are not going to be willing to go into what, in effect, is a war zone. And we've seen this before in the Gulf War, both Gulf Wars, and we'll see it again. Much of the world's oil goes through the Indian Ocean from the Persian or Arabian Gulf. That's the big problem. The other big problem is that no matter what action is taken to suppress piracy, it will probably be taken by the naval force that's in the Indian Ocean now, which is a composite force of a considerable number of navies, starting with the United States Navy, but including China, India, various European navies, Australia, South Korea, and the like. One of the things that I think we have to be concerned about, and I will be speaking about tomorrow as part of a group that has a session, an afternoon session on piracy here, is going to be, what about mission creep? Just as we're seeing now in Libya, what starts off with a limited objective grows into something that is a much broader objective and which might involve the sinking of these motherships, as they're called, as well as skiffs. Once a more vigorous code of rules of engagement, which could be signed off on, for example, by President Obama, or could go through NATO, once the rules of engagement become stronger and the use of considerable force against the pirates, either ashore or afloat, probably afloat, is used, we are faced with the possibility of reprisals against the actual seafarers themselves. In other words, the shooting of taking and shooting of hostages. I only raise this as a possibility. What we're hearing today is a sort of double statement. One is we must put the seafarers' safety first, which we all want to do, including the Marshall Islands, which I represent. And at the same time, we're saying we must go after the pirates. And what I want to see is this inconsistency between the two to be worked out and worked through so that we don't get mission creep. Uh, in other words, the rules of engagement for the navies and other military forces that are involved in the suppression of piracy have got to be very clearly stated and worked out and specific. Otherwise, you're going to have a situation like Black Hawk Down, which was the famous episode in Somalia, or you're going to have a situation rather like what is happening in Libya now, where the interdiction of, 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 the, of, of Gaddafi's forces may be growing into something bigger. And that's the question that I think we face.